afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I am here with Hugo and Laurent. Uh, they will be presenting revolutionizing API testing and mocking with test containers modules. Uh, so I will leave it uh, to them to continue with the session. Uh, good luck. Thank you, Thank you Valentina. Thank you, everyone, and welcome to this session. We are really uh, happy to be here, and I hope you are enjoying the session. You're enjoying the whole days, and I think you will like this uh, if you are doing APIs or uh, you have been struggling with uh, mocking and testing. I think this is something that certainly can help you out. Um, so, uh, Lauren, do you want to do some introductions? Yes, let me start. Yes, let me start. So, first, thank you, Hugo, for inviting me on stage. I am quite, uh, quite happy to do this kind of event with you. It's always a pleasure. So a few words on who I am before starting. So basically, I'm an open source fanboy, and I was working at Red Hat previously. And I'm the one of the co-founder of this Microx open source project we are going to talk about in a few minutes. So I used to be a, a cloud native architect uh, until very recently, worked at Red Hat, worked in financial services also. And yes, basically, I've got a strong background in the, uh, designing distributed systems, designing API programs, and the, the underlying and infrastructure. So could it be Kubernetes or OpenShift as well? And on a personal note, yes, I'm a, I like to raise kids. I'm a gardener, and you'll see that uh, I love pastries. Exactly, and I think we share that love for pastries. Uh, so a little bit more about me. Um, my name is Hugo. I'm part of the Red Hat team um, that is working currently on what we used to call middleware, now application development uh, BU. Um, I'm Mexican based currently in the greater Boston area in Massachusetts in the United States. Um, here is my Twitter handler. If you want to continue the conversation later, if you don't feel comfortable with the, uh, with the chat, you can always ping me. And as Laurent, I'm an open source advocate. I love uh, to contribute to open source, being able to be part of this, like we are doing with Microx. And I specialize mostly on APIs in general, um, even driven APIs, asynchronous APIs, everything related to that. On the personal note, yeah, I also uh, like pastries and um, any kind of pastries, Mexican pastries are good pastries too. Um, but also uh, history, travel, and I consider myself a food enthusiast. So I'm uh, very happy to be here and to be able to share with you. So Laurent, are you ready to get started? Yeah, ready to get started. Yeah, ready but to get started. But let's go for just, it. Just, okay, so, okay, so before diving in, uh, I'd like to highlight why this topic is of importance. And it's because we are in the era of uh, distributed systems. And I'm pretty sure that many of you are already dealing with this kind of architecture. So you can call it microservice, mini service, so whatever. It's a distributed system. And how many time have you ever heard or said that uh, every time you are touching a component somewhere, you break something or you end up uh, building some big release train and releasing everything together. And finally, you end up with the situation where all the components everywhere have the same version. So you finally ended up with a distributed monolith. You go maybe if you can, next slide. Yes, so same version everywhere. So it's not just because you're distributed that you're decoupled. It's not just a matter of starting with the D letter. And in fact, if you can go to the next slide, you go, what you really want to achieve is this kind of situation when you have components with different life cycles and different versions, and when you are able to develop, to validate, and to release everything in isolation. So that's really the, the true benefits we, we want from this kind of architecture. And you'll see that testing, contract testings are really 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 important there are great methods to get a high level of confidence that will allow you to to reach this kind of situation and to unlock the true potential of distributed and decoupled architecture so really we are going to put the emphasis on testing integration testing or contract testing in the yeah the 40 minutes to come 
So you go, maybe you can just start diving in. Yes, uh, as, as you were saying, um, the uh, idea of microservices is to be able to um, work uh, with different um, uh, with different versions to be able to have a distributed architecture, but also being able to um, uh, deploy applications and being able to have them working all together. So um, the uh, main the main topic for the, doing this is through uh, integration testing. So basically, we're meaning that. Uh, we have integrate. Uh, we have testing as unit testing where we can check um, each one of our methods and functions and parts of the code. But also we have a point that we need to integrate and being able to uh, connect and try and test um, this kind of integrations with other systems and services. It could be an API, it could be a message broker, it could be a database, could be a different type of systems. So the way to be able to do this usually involves an integration testing environment. And what it means is that you will need to have shared instances that are running that everyone will be um, using to be able to run those, um, those applications, being able to go for, um, for those uh, resources. Or it means that you will need to have a local um, replication of the uh, production environment or at least something that it looks like production environment in your own laptop maybe for some uh, lightweight services it it could be something doable but sometimes when you're talking about you know big databases or you can you need you know infrastructure like a, a three nodes replica of a kafka cluster and so on it comes complicated another approach is to try to do in memory solutions but that's a little bit limiting because you won't be able to have certain features that are going to be present in the real environments. So that's also an option that it's available, but sometimes looks complicated. And finally, one of the latest trends is to be able to use something like Docker Compose. So you are able then to reproduce and start a local version of certain environments. But again, it's a local installation. It's easier than install than having to install a, a full database on your laptop, but still um, it's, it's, um, it's something that you will need to run with the same resources as the application that you are trying. So this is, uh, this is a series of challenges that we have when working with this. Um, so instead of going all the way to the uh, shared environment, we have this practice that we have seen a race in the, in the past that it's uh, focusing on uh, shifting uh, left and basically the idea of shifting left is that we are going to be able to um, work with our microservices with our applications and then being able to consume those services but in a way that we are getting uh, closer to the uh, to the application where we are able to have all those different stacks being able to connect to them from uh, node.js applications java applications and being able to um, validate and having a, uh, a testing environment uh, created and provisioning at the moment that we are executing the tests uh, locally. So um, basically helps you helps us out to be able to reproduce this when uh, uh, when we are as close as, as possible to the uh, code generation or the coding uh, phase. So we are able to avoid getting you know integration builds and then. Uh, missing or uh, finding that there are some challenges or that something is missing later in the phase of the uh, testing. Now, however, as we were we were saying, being able to reproduce those environments on the developer laptop, it's not easy. It is a little bit more complicated. So what we can do is that we can get benefits of some frameworks and libraries that we have available and that we can uh, use for that. Uh, one of these um, uh, uh, options is use a um, series of uh, frameworks called test containers. So test containers uh, were created uh, just after Docker was launched and initially was focusing on being able to create these uh, testing environments for, uh, or basically environments for able to run tests. 
And the benefit of this is that we can then create these environments and also manage their life cycle of the environments. It is actually a library, but it has been ported to multiple languages. Um, the Java version is one of the of the oldest, but there are other more that have been uh, provided by the uh, creators of these containers, and also uh, some others that were contributed uh, from the community to be able to cover uh, more languages. Um, basically, how it works is that it works with Docker, so the common dependencies for our tests are being managed by this uh, library, by this API that it's available to connect with uh, Docker and be able to start some of the containers. But it also helps us, you know, to download and run Docker files. So we are able to then um, generate an environment that is uh, that is uh, more uh, similar to what we are going to be uh, experiencing in the in the deployment uh, of our application. Um, it helps you to manage the life cycle, the advanced networking, and it's very easy to use. So that's why it's getting a lot of traction and a lot of love. And here's the GitHub repo if you want to go there and, and try it. If they have been actually uh, um, been acquired by Docker, so that's a rec very recent news uh, in, in, in the last day. So very interesting things. And the last point that I was mentioning related to the um, life cycle is important because um, if you are not using test containers and you are still you know starting your containers in a manual way you need to uh, to manage the life cycle independently that means that uh, you will need to run a script so being able to be sure that the uh, environment is clean up and it's been um, uh, start up at the, uh, at the exact time when we're using the uh, the framework of test containers uh, that is something that we can directly do uh, during the different code phases of our um, our our code and uh, our test. So we have the before test where we are going to be um, sending the uh, instructions to be able to start our container, to do some initialization, or clean up of the uh, of the environment. During the test, we will have the container running. We will be able to then um, interact with the uh, with the container either through the a TCP socket or an HTTP uh, endpoint, if, depending if we are using a database like this image where we are referring to um, Postgres, but also we can do something like uh, we are going to see APIs to be able to interact and communicate for testing and other capabilities provided by the container. And finally, when we have finished our, uh, our test successfully, hopefully, um, if not, um, we're going to see them, them, them crash and burn. We need to uh, clean up the environment, right? We need to um, uh, tear down the containers that we were using on all the things that were um, were there to be able to be sure that uh, there's nothing uh, left behind and we can then restart again in a, in a new way. And where, who's providing those test containers? Uh, are they provided by, by, by them? Well, no, they have something that they call modules. And these modules are part of the uh, test containers ecosystem, but are provided either by the vendor or are being provided by some uh, members of the community. Um, and the idea is basically that you will have a um, pre-configured um, set of instructions to set up certain you know, um, aspects of these resources of so, uh, middleware components, or in this case, from something like Micro. So they have a complete set of modules that you can search by the language that it's supported, uh, Go, Java, Node.js, Python, etc. And also you can filter by the official modules where you can find uh, that there's uh, different partners and vendors that uh, have been working together with Atomic Jar, who's behind test containers, to be able to guarantee, guarantee, guarantee that the uh, modules are compliant with at least some of the guidelines uh, from the from the guys from from test containers, and well, Microx is actually one of those examples. But why? Let's go deeper on that. And it's because it benefits from what uh, I was saying was one of the uh, first uh, um, uh, um, li uh, languages that were um, that were uh, implementing with test containers. So it's the Java one. Uh, it was created seven years ago, pretty much after uh, Docker API was uh, released using the Docker Java API 
And the interesting thing here is that uh, you can use the framework from test containers to be able to integrate with your Yay unit and other kind of frameworks to be able to uh, to be part of the life cycle of your test, this, your test, as well as uh, being able to be incorporated with uh, with test containers. It's uh, great if you want to run anything or you're working and testing anything that is uh, that can be run a, uh, as a container. So um, containers, uh, the test containers, Java, it's, it's one of the uh, foundations of how what we are going to be covering today. However, there's more than that. So because that's just, you know, a simple way to start containers. But then it comes Microx. So Microx um, is this open source project that Laurent has been working with uh, for a very uh, long time now. And that has been just accepted this summer as a sandbox project on the CNCF Foundation. And it is uh, basically a set of uh, tools and platforms to be able to do API mocking and testing. Um, originally uh, coming from the Kubernetes space as a Kubernetes native tool, but now it has been extended into other different uh, environments. And actually test containers is one of the things we were gonna be working around, around micro. So micro.io, it's the uh, umbrella um, place to go where you can find uh, some of these, um, of these environments. And actually one of those, it's the Microx test container Java. So this is one of the modules that I was mentioning before, where we are able to work with um, specific uh, vendors or providers like, like Microx to get this library for Java, for example, in, in, in this case, or other languages that allows you to embed uh, the Microx lifecycle and management of API contracts and tests as part of your GA unit test in a um, lightweight version that allows you to just throw away instances to be able to just start and stop and, and kill containers. So one of the things that we uh, got from this uh, from these updates, it's that um, Microx now has a very uh, lightweight Uber jar version that allows you to manage most of the features um, available um, and, and used by, uh, by the testing and, and mocking. So you are able to um, to run those along your um, your application. Now this sounds really great, right? Uh, we are able to then use uh, microservices containers with Java with any kind of framework. However, if you are already feeling some love and developer joy with Quarkus, we have something even better, and that's the Microx Quarkus extension. So this is some of the of the great work that we are getting from, from Microx and the Quarkus team. And this Quarkus extension allows you to um, get the benefits of the, uh, of the test containers, plus Microx, plus Quarkus, to be able to bring everything together, all the simple joy development experience for Quarkus, all the benefits of API testing and mocking from Microx, as well as the um, lifecycle management uh, and, and, and management of, of uh, tests from test containers. So this um, allows you to get um, Microx working as, as, uh, at the same time as your own application. It has um, a uh, console, uh, it's part of the console UI. So you have ever run uh, the dev services in any other Quarkus extension, you have an option to get into that and being able to see that, um, that UI. So how it looks like, well, it looks like something like this, uh, where we have the uh, dev UI that you know and love from Quarkus and being able to find now a new block uh, that it's the uh, Microx uh, extension where you can then navigate into the Microx UI where you can see the uh, different, um, uh, different uh, APIs that are gonna be available and that you can start using for, um, for your application. And you can um, manage some of the capabilities from there, but uh, most of the time what you want to do, it's really get into your code, being able to use some of the features um, of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of the application, as well as the, uh, uh, the support from Microx. Now you will ask, well, how it looks like, and yeah, this is where we have some demo time. So we're gonna be able to um, to, uh, to show you something. Again, one of the things that we both love, it's pastry. So 
we're gonna build a pastry service that will be running on our machine. So let's imagine that we have a pastry service that gives us information about pastries. And we get some information of these pastries, like uh, the name of the pastry, the very French description of the pastry, the size of the pastry, some price and status if it is available or not. And we have a very more complex uh, open uh, API for, for this, right? And the idea is that we need to build a service that will give us information so we can then build an application that helps us to do online orders or that is going to be used as the uh, point of sale. And you can also, you know, share with partners so we can uh, share with them how the great, the great pastries we have from our pastries API uh, bakers, and we are just going to be on the sales side. So let's show you how this works in real life. So the first thing is that I have my um, application up and running. So what I did, it's, um, I just did, um, let's do some quick changes and make their uh, definition day. And if you have been following uh, some of the content here, we have a very nice Quarkus application. So we are going to create our um, orders application and see how this it's, uh, it's creating. It's creating a Quarkus uh, simple application. We also have a very nice um, open API that we are going to be using uh, for this. And yeah, let's go to our orders application and let's see some nice VS code extensions and yep, we are loading this. Now the interesting thing here on the uh, micro extension is that we can add um, the different um, different extensions. So we're gonna be adding the microx. So we are gonna Quarkus extension add microx, Quarkus microx to our um, project. So we are gonna be able to see that it's uh, loading in the back and then we are gonna be adding some extensions like um, like rest easy. So we also have the uh, add extensions to the Quarkus project on the VS code side. And we're gonna use the rest, uh, rest client. And we're gonna use um, Jackson, but let's do reactive Jackson. Yep. Okay, so what we need to do is that if you go to Quarkus, there, there's a resources area where you can um, you can paste your um, open API that is gonna be the base for your mocking and testing, right? So you're you, you, Lauren is gonna be talking about more on the testing side. I'm gonna show you more on the mocking side. So what we're adding here is that uh, we have an application, an uh, open API uh, specification that has some examples on the um, on the pastries that, that we have here. So this is uh, one of the uh, things that uh, Microx uses for creating mocks. Um, if you're specify some examples, it will use them to be able to provide them. Uh, there are more complicated, there are more sophisticated ways to generate mocks using the AI assistant, but it's uh, out of the scope of this of this demo. So the the thing here is that um, Microx will detect anything that it's an open API or any other of the um, uh, specifications that uh, Microx uses for um, detecting um, mocks and, and tests, and we'll automatically read that from this uh, from this. Um, from this um, service. So let's go with that and let's run our Quarkus application. So Quarkus dev will bring us to the, um, the application. So we are loading this and we see that test containers is being, being kicked in. So we are starting the services and we see that the um, container for um, 
for dev services for microc is already available at this url so if you want to go there you can do that but uh, an easy way to do that it's just going to our um, local host 8080 and we can go to the dev ui and this is where i was mentioning that we have now microx as a uh, way to uh, show you the uh, ui of microx so if you log in here you are able to go and get the uh, most of the uh, of microx and here you will see that the service that we added is now uh, included as part of the uh, api pastry uh, service and we have some of the uh, mocks here uh, that are available to be uh, consumed so if we need our code uh, to be able to run we uh, we can then see that we can um, uh, replace the um, the greeting resource that instead of saying just hello from rest is reactive we can then go into a um, full implementation i'm just gonna switch to something that i have already working here and that gives us the um, uh, implementation of our API, a pastry API client using the micro profile um, uh, uh, REST client, being able to retrieve pastries or pastries by name. Uh, pastry is just a simple record that we can use. And our greeting resource has been changed to inject our pastry client that is going to be consuming and connecting to the mocking service provided on Microx. And what we're going to be doing is just retrieve the pastries available from our API and then just collect the names of the uh, of the pastries so we can say, hello, this is our pastries. So let's try to run this and see if everything's working correctly. It's uh, starting. We are running the Quarkus um, container and it is there. So if we go into our um, application, let's do HTTP 8080 hello. And what will this be doing? It's just going into um, our services, um, then just uh, call the get pastries client that it's connecting to our um, our service and then returning the information of our um, our examples um, if we want to do some changes let's go to the uh, to the pastry and then remove the croissant for example we are not going to be uh, using croissant as an example and then let's just go to quarkus dev and this time again starts the container very quickly very easy downloading registering all the mocks and now we get back to the um, client and we can see that that now the mock is just serving uh, three different pastries no croissant anymore sorry we uh, we don't have that anymore and it is available um, other of the things that I wanted to share to you is that it's not only for rest clients but also we have different kind of services so let's just um, update this and go to api services and yeah pastries is one of the uh, of the things we can see but there's also grpc there's um there's also information on um on mocks that you can do for a graphql grpc uh soap services web sockets a sync api uh, all those kind of things that micros can handle well the uh the test container can handle some of those uh with this uh, lightweight version but yeah, that, that's very interesting to to work with. And this is the uh, end of the uh, of the first part. So, Lauren, can you take over and, and explain a little bit more on testing? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, you very much for the demo. For the so, demo. so it's very clear, it's very how, clear you how you can you... retrieve third party dependencies and install everything on your laptop without having to wait for anybody to be available, any remote endpoints to be available. So you are totally free to work in isolation. So now we're going to talk about the other side of uh, the testing that is about uh, not testing third party dependencies, but 
testing the conformance of the code you are providing. And that's where we can use some techniques uh, like, for example, contract tests. And contract testing it is a technique for testing uh, an integration point, so typically an API or a microservice interface by checking each application in isolation, where you're ensuring that the messages it sends or receives conforms to a shared understanding that is documented in the contract. So you see the importance of those contracts and they may have different forms. So it could be standard specifications like open API, like squad of files, but it could be also uh, descriptions like postman collections, code, documentation, and so on. And aside of the contracts, you see it in the demonstration from Hugo. We also uh, think that uh, examples have a great importance because when they are uh, carefully chosen, because we don't talk here about uh, randomly generated example, we, we are talking about real life examples. When they are carefully chosen, they can really translate the true uh, expectations you have regarding this API. And so this is the best way for your consumers to really understand how to use your API and how to build some new stuff on top of this. And when they are carefully chosen, they can be turned into an executable data set that can be used, obviously, to produce mocks. That's what uh, Hugo demonstrated a few minutes ago, but also to build a, a real uh, test suite for your uh, microservices and APIs. And this is exactly how Microx is, uh, is working underneath. Uh, so the principle is very is very simple, but yeah. we hear a lot of uh, people that are facing yeah. some real challenges when doing this at scale. And in fact, we identified the three challenges. We are going through those challenges very, very, very quickly. Uh, the first one is the challenge is about the origin of your contract. Uh, should it be a uh, produced by the consumer or should it be produced by the, the producer of the API? And we heard a lot about consumer-driven contract testing these last years. We think it's very powerful when it's used within the, the same team or within teams that have a great proximity. But we also think that it's not usually very applicable to large-scale organization or when you are designing an API that aims to be consumed by dozens, hundreds, thousands of consumers. So it always sounds like a chicken and egg problem to me because as a producer, you're not going to wait for the consumer to, to know what could be your capabilities and how to design and test your service, right? So it's quite a, yes, uh, a bit weird to me. Also, have in mind that uh, organizations are seeking autonomous teams for more velocity, more product orientation, and more responsibility. And so we started shifting from service design driven by obligation to service design method uh, led by promises. And this shift, for me, this shift for me is at the core of modern architecture where robustness, where performance are paramount, and where teams are empowered to fulfill this promise. And so in this era, you cannot place obligations on your team. So obviously, this doesn't mean that we should be blind or deaf to the consumer's feedback. So, but I would say that being a producer driven with a strong focus on consumer feedback is really a key for scaling. Uh, another issue we are facing here on the field is uh, the, choosing the right type of contract artifacts. And basically, we, we are all coders, and using code seems very natural at a small scale. But you have to think about uh, the time when you are scaling and you are dealing with much more, much more languages, much more frameworks, and it could be very tricky to manage all these different styles of API. This really can become a nightmare. And secondly, there is also this problem of having to, to synchronize your code with some standard specification, because even if you start writing code, at the end of the day, uh, you'll probably have to provide uh, some kind of standard specification like OpenAPI or Swagger file to your consumers so that they can be able to, to, to really 
um, uh, use your API. So if, in to if on top of that, you are adding some consideration regarding versionings and so on, this can become really hard to maintain contract tests based on codes. So we prefer, uh, yes, uh, an approach that, mm, that is many, much more consistent and that is based on schema. And finally, uh, the third and last challenge we see at scale is the one of, yes, having a, a contract test that may be scoped or driven by use case or much more global. And of course, having requirements attached to a scope use case can be, can be really great for documentation, but only relying on this leads to, to two risks to me. You may have some capabilities in your API or microservice that are not covered by your contract test, or you may also have inconsistent tests that may be spanned in your different use cases. So the Microsoft approach very briefly uh, is, is the default to an approach that allows you to scale and to use this technique of contract test, uh, testing at large scale. So it is mainly producer driven with the ability to work at the schema level with all different types of specification standards. You, you go talked about it a few minutes ago. So it could be open API, it could be uh, GraphQL, it could be gRPC and so on. But this default approach can be customized and can be completed by integrating artifacts coming from consumers and by integrating some, uh, some customization. And we'll see that in a few minutes in demo. So very briefly, because we are running out of time, in Microx, we are able to do contract testing at two different levels. Uh, the first one is the foundation one. This is the where we are checking the syntactic conformance of your API. This means that it, uh, it actually respects the structure of message. So consumers will be technically able to interact with API. And the other one is the one of the, the behavior conformance Okay, when we are more, focus, more focused on the, the business rules of your business domain. So this, this is what makes the, the API, the microservice reliable regarding the business domain. So let me now switch to a demonstration. And in this demonstration, I will uh, focus on the contract testing part. So, uh, I will not uh, follow on Hugo's demo on Java, but I'll switch to a new language out here. I uh, do contract testing stuff using a Node.js application. And basically, let's imagine that I'm now focusing on this order service that is reusing my third party API, pass tree API. That's why I demonstrated Hugo. But now I want to be sure that this order service also provide a robust API that is uh, totally conformant to my specification so that online uh, services, stores, or even partners can build on top of my API. So that's it. Let me switch to the demonstration. So here I've got um, a TypeScript Node.js NestJS application. Uh, with, uh, that is exposing this API. It has an order controller here. Uh, it is implementing the business logic as well. And we have introduced here this uh, Microx test containers binding for Node.js or JavaScript language. So very easy to integrate this into your dependencies. Just had this single line in your package.json. And once you have, you've done this, you have this ability to do exactly the same thing as done uh, Hugo previously. So you can then test your uh, client libraries to be assured that you are able to reach out your third party library to uh, handle protocol and network serialization stuff very, very easily. So basically I can here run a test here and this test will do exactly the same thing that has done Hugo. So it will spin up a new Microx container, uh, configure everything and bind it to your application so that your application is actually this mock services instead of the third party libraries. 
But now let's switch and let's focus on contract testing. So I have prepared here uh, an empty test, a contract test, okay? And I want to be sure that my API conforms to my open API spec. spec. And this is where I'm gonna use my course. So, uh, not like in Quarkus where everything is hidden and done automatically for you. Here you will have to do a bit of plumbing, let's say, uh, to be able to start the Microx uh, test container service. Okay. So this is one also of the advantage of using Quarkus. Everything is already done automatically for you. But here in my setup method, I will uh, start a new Microx container, filling it with Open service, op, order service, open API, and API pass to uh, open API. In the teardown method of this test, I will have to stop my container and to close my application because my actually my application is running to expose my API so that I can test it. So this is what I'm doing just right here. Here I'm configuring my application and starting my application. Now, in my test, I will have to use some specific, uh, specific objects, specific utilities that is provided by Microx. So you will simply have to ask for uh, executing a new test. So you're building what we call the test request. And actually, you want to uh, test the conformance of your code regarding this. API or this service interface, you will use a testing strategy that is called Open API Schema Validation. And you will test this against your running application. So that's why you, you will use this kind of test container specific alias to be able to target your running application within your test. And Microx will execute this test, give you a result, and you will be able to assert the success of the result and get eventually different details on the, the, the different test case and test steps that were executed. So let me just run this one here. It's a run test end to hand, and I'm gonna use this one here. And you will see that, oh, it fails. It fails, yes, it's not a success, it's just a failure. So hopefully we have the ability to have some details on what's going wrong. So we have this specific object here, the test result, and we can just, let's say, introspect and print out this, um, this object to see what's going on. So I'm gonna execute the test once again. Okay, and here you can see that, yes, I've got a message here and it says that uh, one of the response I get from this API when I trying to, to create a new order, in fact, it has a missing required property. It, it is lacking the customer ID. Oh yes, this is because uh, I'm a bit a lazy developer and I forgot to uh, recopy the customer ID into the result. So let's just increment this one here. I made a mistake while implementing my business logic and that should be fixed. Executing the, um, the test once again. And you see that it's now okay. It's green, it's fast. So you see it's a very, very convenient way of just checking that your services interface or APIs are really conformant to your specs. You, not, you don't have to write code or at least very few, just asking Microx to do the test for you, okay? And Microx will reuse everything it found useful in your open API specs into your Postman collection, into maybe some other artifacts you you fit it with to uh, infer some kind of data sets, some test suites, and it will run everything for you 
just giving you the output in case you have something that is not conformant with the, the specification. And so it could be uh, really easy also to integrate different versions of your specs. So you can test with the latest one, but you can also test with your, the previous one so that you are really sure uh, within your development workflow that you are not introduced uh, breaking changes that you are still keeping the backward compatibility, for example. So you don't have to wait for the CI CD. You can use this directly into your laptop. So very convenient. One thing I wanted to demonstrate, but we are too short here, is that we have different kind of um, strategies. So you can reuse a definition found in an open API schema, but you can also use these things called the Postman strategy where, for example, you can reuse different scripts and different assertions you have put into your Postman collection if you are a, a true fan of, uh, of Postman collections, for example. That's it for the demo. So let me now switch back to, to the conclusion, to the, the wrap-up. So we've seen this kind of design. Hugo demonstrated that we are able with Microx to, to mock the the part on the right the third party libraries uh, so that you don't have to wait for an environment to be ready you can do this directly on your laptop and we have uh, take care about checking that the part on the left is really conformant to the specs and that you are really doing some things that will give you a high level of confidence regarding its capability to be integrated with other consumers with other microservices that rely on this service so as a key takeaways, uh, we wanted today to yes to to for you to to be convinced that API and microservices contract testing is a, a technique you must master to be able to to get this high level of confidence and to unlock the potential of decoupled architecture. When you are doing this at scale, there are challenges uh, and we really do think that Microx, that is a schema-based plus test container that can be directly integrated into your development workflow can be a really a game changer to allow you to solve these scale scaling challenges. But even if we have a default approach based on schema, you also have the a total flexibility to integrate your, your own testing strategy, your own additional artifacts so that you can really create your, your own strategy for uh, testing and for getting the, the best level of confidence within your, your microservices development. To finish on Microx, uh, I wanted the, to share with you this, uh, this overview that we are doing this with all different kinds of API. Okay, so processes, REST APIs, GraphQL, gRPC, and all things related to async API as well. Okay, with a, a lot of different supported protocols. And uh, yes, as said previously, we are doing this with different language bindings. So you can integrate this into your Java unit test, into your Node unit test, into your Golang unit test as well. So we are very <clears throat> polyglot, let's say. And finally, as we, yes, uh, the very differentiator in Microx is that we have this ability to cover the whole life cycle and you may reuse the same tool and also, also most importantly the same source of truth the same specification the same artifact on the whole life cycle starting with the inner loop on the developer laptop and getting back to the ci cd when micro can be integrated for different plugins and getting back to conformance checking why not on your qa or even production environment within your your kubernetes cluster for example so thank you very much for, for attending this session. Thank you very much for your questions. And yes, just finishing on that, we, we need you because we are a 100% open source project. So you can join us on, on Zulip. Like the Quarkus team, we have a Zulip chat. You can follow us on Twitter. And yes, if you try it, if you like it, feel free to connect with the community and distribute it, share, and why not contribute to the project? Thank, very, thank, thank you very you much. Very much. Thank you, Laurent. Uh, it, it was great to know more about testing and how you can do not only Java, but also other languages. 
Um, if you want to get started with your applications, being able to try and deploy and, and test in a Kubernetes environment, the Red Hat Developer Sandbox, it's uh, been revamped. So now you can try that. You can try Dev, Dev Spaces. You can try uh, OpenShift AI. So that that's something we really encourage you to, to try. And finally, well, thank you everyone. In the last slide, this, we are um, really uh, happy to be here and we hope you enjoy the rest of your session. Valentina, if there's no other questions, then I think we are um, done for this uh, moment. Yeah, yeah, thank you so, thank much. You so much. I really, I really let, let me mute. Okay. Uh, I really enjoyed the session. So I hope everyone enjoyed it as I did. Uh, and everyone feel more confident about working with testing and containers and contracts, APIs. So um, what we will do is that uh, it seems we don't have any comments or questions. Anything else that you may want to ask? If not, we will be finishing. We will give you a few minutes before we are starting the next session. The next session will be about Cloud Native Application ML, the composing with Cloud Native and OpenShift. So I will see you in a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dean. Such a great session. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.